I'm testing my camera. Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? Well, I messed up so bad on YouTube. Of course, YouTube, uh, this camera's doing the same thing. It's lagging. Anyway, I'm just going to go with it because I messed up so bad. I did 47 seconds, so I had to send people to Facebook because I could not save my Facebook video to YouTube. So anyway, my camera is lagging again. We're just going to go with it because uh, it's better than it not. I'm just going to focus on the one that's not lagging. All right. Well, tonight we are going to do Psalms 49 and 50. And I kept pushing my time and pushing my time and pushing my time. And I'm sorry, but I was on the phone. And... um. I felt like I needed to stay on the phone. So here I am. Maybe just because I'm coming on later, maybe someone can watch. They might not have been able to watch if I came on earlier. I don't know. God's timing is perfect. Is what I've learned in my life is that sometimes things don't line up when I want them to, but that's okay. Because God's timing is always perfect. So for face, um, not for Facebook, for YouTube tonight, I have some special colorful bubbles that are going on. So um, anyway, it's all good. Psalms 49 and 50 tonight. And I will not be here tomorrow night because it's Wednesday night. So I hope you had an awesome Tuesday. I had a good Tuesday. And um, I'm having leftover spaghetti tonight. And um, anyway, it was a beautiful day today. I got out and did some errands, and it was beautiful. So let's begin in prayer. God, we just come to you and we just pray, God, that you would open the hearts and the ears and the eyes of the lost God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved. God, we thank you because you are on the throne and you are in control and there is no God like you. We thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, for being our strength and our refuge. You are mighty and magnificent and powerful God. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truth, God. You are loving and kind and compassionate, God. You are caring. You are trustworthy. You are faithful. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. God, we pray for the prodigals. We just pray, God, that they would Remember the relationship that they had with you and that they would repent and that they would be reconciled, God. We pray for all the tragic things that are going on. I saw that in Michigan there was a school shooting, God. We just pray that you would be with these people, that they would feel your presence, that there would be people that would come to minister to them that you would give the families peace, comfort, and strength that lost loved ones today. And for the ones that were injured, God, that they would receive healing. God, things like this are just happening all the time, God. We just pray that you would be with these people. We pray that you would be with the people from Wauk Waukesha. That doesn't sound right. I don't know how to pronounce it anyway. Um, it's in Michigan too, I think. We just pray that you would be with those people that were at the parade, God, that 10 people died. Um, I don't know how many people died. I'm sorry, God. There's just so much of this that is happening, God. So I just lift these people up to you. Lift up these families that tragically have lost their loved ones in an instant, God. I just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. That they would be healed, God. 
We pray for the ones that were injured, God. We just pray for a healing for them. And we pray that you would give their family strength. We pray for people that are sick, God, that you would heal their bodies, that you would give them strength, that they would feel your presence. We pray for other people that have family members, friends that have passed on, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them and for a healing too, for a moving forward, God. Um, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, there's just more and more things that happen every day. Pray and share, warriors. Uh, my name is Charm. I don't have my cat tonight. She is taking a nap in her bed. And so she is not here. And uh, she did not come. But my name is Charm, and this is my ministry. My ministry is to share the truths of God through his word and the gospel of Jesus. So I feel like that is my calling. And I used to have a bracelet that said called, but I've lost it. I need to find it or make me another one. I have the beads to make me another one. I should just make me another one. All right, well, let's get into Psalms. Psalms 49 and 50. And I will try to stay, try to stay on the, same, the right page. I didn't do that too well last night. Get a drink from my, this is my cup. This is Grandy. Is that is my grandmother's name? It's Grandy. So I drink out of this cup every day because it gives me two of these, gives me what water I need to drink. Okay, the confidence of the foolish. And this is the chief to the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Hear this, all peoples, give ear, all inhabitants of the world both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever, that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit. For he sees wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish, and of their posterity, who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are led in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive, receive me. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lives, he blesses himself. For men will praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honor, yet does not understand, is like the beasts that perish. Okay, so... This is talking about the confidence of the foolish. There are many people out there that believe that they will never die. There are many people out there that I think, they think 
they're going to have a U-Haul of money going right behind them after they die. And that is not true. We will take nothing, absolutely nothing from here. Only thing that we will take from here is our relationship with Jesus and our love for Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit and our love for others. And I believe maybe we'll take some memories. I don't know. I don't know about that. But I do know that all of my worldly possessions that I have here, I consider stuff. It is not going with me when I go. I won't be out of here so fast that we're not taking anything with us. So why store up our treasures here on this earth if we are taking nothing with us to heaven? And so he's just talking about how the foolish think that they will live forever and that their money will um, give them, um, that they can redeem the souls of others with their money and their riches and that they believe that Um, that they will not they will not take anything with them for when he dies he shall carry nothing away his glory shall not descend after him so all their riches and all the things that they've stored up here on this earth they're not taken with them they need to be storing up the treasures of heaven, which is the relationship with God, the relationship with Jesus, the relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is most important. So let's see what my study says about this. The certainty of death and the inadequacy of wealth are the subject of this wisdom psalm emphasizing the folly of depending on material riches. Wealth cannot buy the precious gift of life, which comes from God alone. And that's kind of, you know, wealth cannot buy a salvation that comes through Jesus, that comes through the gift of that God gave us through Jesus. That is where we get salvation. We don't get it from our money. We can't buy it. I have a fake million dollar bill. This will not buy your ticket to heaven. This will not. Well, let's move on to Psalm 50. And if you have any comments about Psalm 49, then please put it in the comments. I did not read the comments today. I didn't have any comments. But I did check. I will check. So if you have any prayer requests, you have any comments, then please put them in. Okay. Psalm 50 says, God the righteous judge. A psalm of Asaph. The mighty one, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth. From the rising of the sun to its going down. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. God will shine forth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him. And it shall be very temp tempestuous all around him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth. And he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me. Those who have made covenant with me by sacrifice, let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your fit folds for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills 
I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine in all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats, offer to God thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High, call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction, and cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him, and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil, and your tongue frames deceit, and you sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders is con his, condu his conduct aright. I will show the salvation of God. So the wicked, the wicked one day will be judged by God. And you wonder, as I wonder sometimes, why not now? But God is patient and God is loving and God is caring and God wants none. Like, Zero. This is what a zero is. For people that put other things up, this is a zero. God wants zero to perish. He wants none to perish. None. He wants none to perish. But they will. They will because they will not humble themselves before God. And it says so in God's word that judgment will come it will but he is patient and he does love everyone even the wicked god loves the wicked god so wants the wicked to turn back to him or to turn to jesus for the first time okay this is what my study bible says all the earth belongs to the lord the people mistakenly assumed that God needed their sacrifices and offerings, but God reminded them that every beast, cow, and bird already belonged to him. There is no lack in God. He needs nothing. We worship to meet our need, not God's. We need to experience the joy of sharing and giving. God desires our sincere worship and thanksgiving. He wants us to depend on him. That is what God wants. God wants us to trust him, to love him, to walk in his ways and not the ways of the world, to store our rewards up in heaven and not here. Because he's going to come back. And he's going to judge the wicked, just like we read in Psalm 50. And he's going to destroy this earth because it has been abused. And people think that they are like gods and they can sustain something that they never created. God created everything outside that we see and everything. And he has been sustaining it for thousands of years. Maybe longer. I don't know why they think all of a sudden that they can sustain something that they didn't create. But God laughs at the foolishness of man. He laughs at it. All right, how are we going to do the salvation message tonight? 
uh, wonder if I can read this. I really like this. This is short, but very important. It says the keys to life. I don't even know if you can read that or not. Uh, keys to life. I don't know if I can read it. I'm going to try, though. Key to life. Number one, God loves you and has a great plan for your life. Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10, 10. And number two, sin separates you from God. We are all sinners, Romans 3.23. The price for sin is death, Romans 6.23. Number three, the price is already paid. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners, Romans 5.8. Jesus bridged the gap of separation between God and man. Number four, it's free. Eternal salvation is a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. You don't earn or work your way to heaven by morality or religion or what we talked about long ago, riches. You can't buy your way into heaven. Uh, Jesus, number five, Jesus is the key to life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Number six, it's up to you to ask Jesus into your heart. Pray this prayer. So if you want to invite Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, then repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So it is important to be baptized, go to church, pray, and read your Bible, and share with others what Jesus has done for you. The salvation is a free gift. And so being baptized and going to church and praying and reading your Bible and sharing with others, I'll feed you in a minute. Um, I'll feed you in a minute, okay? That is a way to grow your relationship with God. And my son is here, and he is hungry. I kept having to push my time, push my time, push my time. Okay, well, I am going to give you God's blessing. If you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom of... Hmm, excuse me. The kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his son. So this is a blessing from God that I like to read every night. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This whole world needs some peace. There's so much division. There's so many things, so many evil things that are taking place, just like I mentioned some of them tonight in the prayer. The school shooting, I don't even know anything about it. There's missing children all over the place. There's just so much going on, and we need Jesus. 
Jesus is so important and we need him. So let's pray. God, we thank you for this time that we can open your word, God, and that we can learn, that we can be reminded of the things that we need to be reminded from your word, from your truth. God, just give us the boldness to go out and share your truths everywhere we go and to um, and to share the gospel also, God. I just pray for anyone that comes here. I pray for their families. I pray for their friends, God. I pray for my family. I pray for my friends, God, and their families. I just pray, God that you would bless them, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, God, that you would lead and guide them, God. And if anyone needs Jesus as their Savior, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus. If anyone needs to return to a relationship with you, God, that you would draw them back to you, God. They would repent and be reconciled. God, just give us the boldness to go forward to keep moving with Jesus and just help us to shine the light of Jesus wherever we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, y'all have an awesome rest of your night and have an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday. We'll not be here tomorrow night. So much love. I'll be back Thursday. Much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again, good night.